Hello everyone, it's Khalif PvP bringing you another video. This time I'm not doing uh, your typical thief video. Instead, I am doing um, the state of World vs. World in Guild Wars 2. Especially the state of Tier 1 World vs. World in Guild Wars 2. Um, I usually don't like doing these types of uh, builds. I mean, these types of videos rather. But um, I think I, I, I want to kind of air my grievances to kind of illustrate one of the key failures of World vs. World that really needs to be addressed and needs to be addressed fast before it kind of think it explodes on itself uh, and it, it's so let me explain what you know what my grievances are so first of all uh, my home server is jadequery and for those of you that don't know about jadequery jadequery has been the longest tier 1 server uh, in Guild Wars 2 we haven't always been ranked 1 but be, we have been the longest in tier 1. We've been in tier 1 since pretty much uh, ever since the tier servers have been established. It's always been us, HOD, ET, IOJ and it's been kind of going back and forth with, with those and you know HOD and ET kind of fell off the grid because of the mass exodus and um, but Jade Query has maintained its tier 1 status for again for the longest of all those servers and there's obviously new servers that I've been moving up to tier 1 and they're they're they are really good for what they do however the issue is Jade Query from the beginning has been pretty much uh, carried in World vs. World um, by few guilds for example Fire, Esol, MMAC slash AOS and then a couple other guilds that I can't think off the top of my head but generally speaking it has been those guilds that have been carrying uh, World vs. World for jQuery. The big problem with this is that we have an influx of PVEers that came to the server prior to the uh, to the, the move to uh, weekly weekly tr server transfers so previously it used to be every day you could server transfer and now I think starting November 1st was the official date um, it they changed it to where you can only do it every other week or every every week rather uh, with this what we've seen is we're pretty much outmanned in any borderlands that we go to and Regardless of you know what our population is, we are outmanned on o all the borderlands, which is again, like I said, our server has been from beginning been carried by these few guilds, uh, coordinating on Teamspeak, etc., etc. So what is the problem? Uh, normally, this this would not be a problem. Um, in the past, we could just you know dust ourselves off and you know recruit other guilds to come come play on our server. Except the big issue is. Um, Jade Query is full, uh, so even if we are to kind of entice other guilds to come join us, we can't get them to join us because it's full. And this is where my biggest problem lies: is that we are kind of shit out of luck uh, when it comes to Jade Query. We can't really force people to World vs. World. We can't tell PVE people, "Hey, come World vs. World," um, you know. It's my opinion that if you want a PvE, you should be allowed a PvE. If you want a PvP, you should be allowed a PvP. No one really should force you to do either of those two things. However, um, not being able to kind of transfer people in and not being able to fill these giant holes that we have is one of the problems that we have. And, and I, I speak of Jade Query, and I'm sure other servers suffer the same fate. Um, a little bit maybe not f to the same um, same account but you know I I'm sure they had the same problems that we're facing and that for me is where you know it hurts right in the gut because we have we have done so much for those of you that have been in jQuery um, know that you know the community server community has done a lot to get to where we are it wasn't something that you know we did that, that just fell onto our laps it was you know things that we actually we organized guild we we have a massive team speak server going we have massive forums that we talk strategies and etc cetera, etc cetera. so we need to kind of address these problems that we have uh, problem number one problem number one that 
World vs. World suffers from is, again, like I stated, uh, the full status of servers, which pretty much prevent new guilds, and that's essentially what it is. You, you can't really... World vs. World is such a large-scale uh, thing where you can't really have one or two people transfer in and be like, oh, it's fine. Uh, it really is down to um, having, having multiple guilds essentially joining your server to kind of plug in these holes, and those guilds itself have to be pretty fairly large guilds. Uh, World vs. World is essentially Zerg on Zerg, and if one of the servers can't put up a Zerg, they are going to lose. Uh, Tactics can only really play, uh, you know, really only play a certain role in the world. So, the issue with, the, the problem with the current iteration is that it really only looks at your server population, and it doesn't really look at your server's world versus world population, and that, that's the problem that we, that many servers, not just jQuery, um, that, that, that we're having, is that our server will be filled with um, non-world versus world players. Uh, this can be PVEers, which is majority of them, uh, and it can be SPVPers, which again is not too much, but it still doesn't really count. Uh, world vs. World, because some people, rightfully so, don't really like World vs. World as their, you know, PvP, uh, uh, PvP fit. They they prefer the SPvP element of it rather than the whole Zerg on Zerg, which is fine. Again, like I stated, you know, th there is no wrong PvP or wrong way to play uh, your Wars 2. But the issue is those people are counted towards our World vs. World population which essentially means that uh, you know a server can essentially that a server can have uh, a 90% PVE population with only 10% of world versus world and we have this conundrum where they can't get any more new people onto that server until they get rid of their you know they until they can really shed some of their PVEers and PVEers really don't have a necessity to leave that server uh, server transfers is really only about world vs world um, you know P for PVE it, you know, transferring servers really it, it really isn't m that much of a high priority so what is the solution that you know that I can think of I, the biggest solution in my opinion is to separate world versus world population from your PvE population so that y instead of taking the count of uh, people on your dust. server and then saying oh you you know you have reached the full limit uh, instead the full status should really be based on your average uh, world versus world population so if a server really only has let's say 10% of their population doing world versus world uh, th they should not be listed as a full server um, on the server selection screen and right now what we have is that everyone and their grandmother is counted for the server so that a server with full, st full status ne necessarily doesn't mean that they're doing world vs. world the in next thing that kind of affects world vs. world is kind of tied in with the population uh, distribution of a world and somewhat uh, what my next topic is and it's that world was this world right now is set up as essentially a giant money sink um so right now in this borderlands I am outmanned um and then so if I try to take one of these objectives chances are I'm gonna die which is fine well you know the death isn't really what the issue is but soon as I incur death I'm gonna take uh, durability loss and f in order for me to repair and all that stuff uh, I need money and in order to get money I need to do PVE and that's kind of a you know kind of an issue that I'm having with this is that right now there's really no sustainable way to do <laughs> World vs. Nice. World if you look at PVE you, you know, y if you do a dungeon and you die uh, you get rewarded pretty heavily at the end of a dungeon that you can essentially kind of uh, recoup your losses, so to speak. Uh, with World vs. World, that really isn't the case. Um, the outman buff really does not help us at all. Uh, it's 20% magic find, 33% experience, and 33% uh, karma. That really doesn't help 
the side that's you know that's losing uh, right now I'm like I think I'm pretty much the only person on this map um, if not like I can probably count the number of people on this map um, and there's really nothing I can do for it other than just you know pray and hope that we have more people and it really looks like we don't uh, we don't have a single we have just that sentry and it's about it um, so you know I can't I can't do anything in this map other than just leave this map completely and which kind of falls to the previous point that it's either a zerg uh, from a guild or it's nothing there it, you really cannot put together a successful offense without without a big zerg being there and um, and again because of this outman buff and because I'm gonna lose a lot of durability if I try to solo stuff and all that kind of culminates into an uh, environment where I don't want to be in a non zerg uh, map so uh, that, that, that I think that's one of the things that we kind of need to address is that there really is no the outman buff really should be reversed it's instead of getting these magic find and all that it it really should be I'm getting something that so I can fight back against the enemies and actually you know if, if I'm out man and you can kinda see in this mini map you don't see a single uh, single person you don't even see a single star coming up and you know s if I'm the only person on this map I, I should be able to you know pretty much solo a camp so solo a camp fine you know so something that I can kinda turn the tide against my favor and and it's kind of a tough thing to do because you don't want to make it too powerful that uh, you know one person's able to hold off a million people or something like that but you know you, there is some juggling that you need to do in order to kind of in order to kind of make it so that if a server is outmanned they still have a fighting chance to come back and uh, so another take thing some with losing money and all that fun stuff is um, what's the point of world was this world uh for let, let's assume that i'm not into pvp as nearly as i as i am right now but let's assume i'm just an average joe who just plays mmos uh neither a pve -er nor a pvp -er. uh why do i care about the outcome of uh what was this world right now what was this world really as i said is set up as a money sink uh, you don't really make that much money out of it so it's not the money that i care about um, and if if I'm not going for uh, for what is an uh, epic or a rare or whatever, uh, I don't need the badges. So if, if if it's if I'm just an average Joe, World vs World really has no effect on me. I really don't need World vs World. I don't. And th I think that's something that really needs to um, that people need to address is that we need to have World vs World mean something. And right now, if that meaning is nothing. So that's one of the things that they need to address is that uh, meaningless of World War World and hopefully we can get something something where World War World feels more dynamic and kind of comforts everybody. Another thing that I want to mention about World War World and I think that this kind of sums up everything that's wrong with World War World and it, it kind of affects everything that was wrong with World War World is that the burnout effect is kind of catalyzed well, um, by the fact that there's only two maps that you can play in the borderlands uh which is pretty much a split copy of each other and then eternal battlegrounds so i mean again this is equivalent to let's assume that pve there's only two uh two dungeons and each dungeon is essentially just the same copy of each other and i'm pretty sure everyone will agree that you will yes you will just be burnt out and uh i think this is one of the things that should have been addressed in the beginning and I don't think ArenaNet thought uh, World vs. World was going to be this popular um, but yeah I, I think this is some th I th they need to essentially solve this problem before they kind of jump into others because uh, you know by adding a new map adding some new new something new with World vs. World uh, you're definitely gonna kind of like encourage more people to come up are you gonna encourage more more people to check out what world versus world is and as it is right now uh, once you've done it for you know uh, for everyone that's a world versus world player we've been doing it for three months and um, 
So if you you know you, once you've done it for three months, you've seen everything. The meta game in the Borderlands is kind of the same. Uh, EB, the meta game in EB is the same. So I mean, yeah, we definitely need a new Borderland. Uh, not, not, I, I don't want to say a new Borderland. Uh, we need all three of the Borderlands changed. Uh, I don't think adding a new Borderlands is going to help because that's just going to spread out your population even more. Uh, so I think the current Borderlands we have, they just need to change. So that pretty much uh, sums up my uh, rant slash uh, video for World vs. World. And I, I really think ArenaNet really needs to do something, something fast. Because we are at a crossroads as to where World vs. World is heading. Um, and a lot of people are just, you know, just sitting there wondering, you know, what's the, you know, what's the path that Arena is going to take for World vs. World. Are they going to... I'm gonna kind of go with their initial, um, you know, initial saying, oh, World vs. World is kind of like an afterthought. Or are they gonna do something more, uh, you know, more unique with it, such that, you know, that World vs. World actually matters as an endgame and it's a viable endgame um, environment.